Hey everyone, my name is Hayden and I'm a full-time software engineer based in London. In this video, I wanna talk about pre-commit hooks and how you can use them to run automated checks on your code, to run formatting, uh, fix white space, trim white space, you know, ensure that your code adheres to the same rule set so that when everyone's making different commits, you know, all your code is formatted in the same way. Recently with the EVE project I've been building on my channel, I've wanted to push the ability for people to um, you know, open source and contribute to that project more. But in doing that, I thought you know, everybody has different code styles and you know, ways that they like to structure their code. So if I was gonna open it up for people to contribute to, I wanted a way to make sure everyone's code that was committed was consistent with everybody else's. Therefore, I've chosen to go for the pre-commit hook method, which is basically just before you make a commit, it will run a bunch of hooks right which basically go off run check your code base and if the test passed or if the hook passed you can commit that piece of code and if it doesn't pass you know you'll have to go and address that so it could be something like you know you've not uh, put the imports all in the same format so let's jump over to PyCharm now and see how that works okay so you can see here that I've changed the line of code in my project uh, and I want to make this commit but as you can see here, my comment doesn't adhere to PEP8 because there should be at least uh, two white spaces uh, before that. So um, before that comment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that there. And what we can do is run something called pre-commit hooks, um, which would normally run um, when you actually commit a line of code, but you can actually run them manually from the terminal as well. So I'm just going to show you here. So you can see here I'm running all of these pre-commit hooks. Um, and this one, for example, called black has failed. Uh, and it's failed on this command football line um, and it is gone and you can see here when I click back onto this uh, script this will jump over because it will format that code for me and then if I clear that and run my pre-commit hooks again you can see all of them are passed now and I'll be able to make my commit. So let's now implement this and see how we do this. Okay, so this is the pre-commit website where you can come and it will give you a guide of how to install it. Um, this is kind of what we're going to be following along, but I'll uh, show you over in a repo I've got here. So this is um, the Eve repo. So first things first, we're going to need to um, install pre-commit. And in order to do that, you can say pip install pre-commit like so. Uh, let that run, let that install onto your system. Perfect. And if that has it installed correctly, you should be able to type um, pre-commit dash dash version and it should print out the version that's installed on your machine. So in order for pre-commit to work, it needs a um, pre-commit config.yaml. So uh, I'm just going to add a file. Uh, very important here that you need to do dot uh, pre-commit config.yaml like so um, and just make this a blank file. So and this is where we'll add all our hooks that we want to run when we make commits. Okay, before we add anything to the YAML file, we just need to add pre-commit to our Git repo. So if you've not done so already, or you've not in a Git repo, you can say Git init, uh, which initializes this repo as a Git repo. Uh, and then you just say pre-commit uh, install, and that will just install itself onto the repo there for you. So yeah, if you follow the documentation through here, it basically does explain how to um, add and all the different hooks that you can. If you come up here, you can see uh, supported hooks and it'll tell you all the hooks that you can add. But I'll just quickly explain what all the different um, parts mean. So you'll need to be in your pre-commit config.yaml and you um, can basically add things called repos, which are just kind of collections of hooks. Um, so there's some default ones that come with pre-commit um, and you need to give the git repo that it comes uh, with them and you need to say what revision of that repo you're looking for. So for example, this is uh, 3.3.0. So in order to check that, you'd come over here, you'd take the URL, um, plug that into a web browser, which will load up uh, the web browser and you can see uh, what revision do I want? You can come into tags and it will, uh, so this is 3.3.0, which is version 3.3.0. So after a revision, uh, you need to define what hooks you would like to add. Um, and you do this by um, typing in IDs. So you can get all the IDs uh, again, if we go back here, uh, all the supported hooks. So this is that, for example, that pre-commit hooks YAML and all of the IDs are this one's here and they all give you a little explanation of what each one of them does. Um, I'm just gonna copy in a couple um, IDs here. Uh, so for example, this one fixes training white space, this one formats any JSON, uh, this does end of line fixes, um, this uh, makes sure all tests have tests in the name or at the end, uh, this fix requirements is, and this uh, takes away training, oh, I've got training white space in there twice. Perfect, so when we commit items now, this should run. How can we check that these are running? So we can type pre-commit run, um, and because I haven't got any files staged for commit, this will probably say uh, no files to check, as you can see there. Because if I go um, git 
status, you can see I've not got any staged files. So if I go git add, git add everything, this will go through my entire directory and stage all these files. Uh, so when I go git status now, you can see I've got a lot of files ready to be staged. Then if I come back over here and say git commit run, this will then go through and run those now on all of the files in my directory and it will give a either skipped, so for example I've got no tests in this directory at the minute, um, or a failed or a passed. Uh, so none of, none of my pre-commit tests passed, uh, which is good because I wouldn't want to commit the code that I've got in this repo at the minute because it's not in like a nice uh, easy to read format. So for example, look, this is the uh, requirements.txt hook and it failed because um, I haven't sorted my requirements uh, correctly, but these do all run in the background. So if I run this again, you will need to stage these every time though. So um, for example, if I go back to git status, you know, because because I staged my files and then changed them. Oh, all these egg files are not really. Because my pre-commit hooks changed all my file versions, I need to stage them again. So if I go git add everything, and then go git commit pre-commit run, you can see this time it passed because the last time we run the, the hooks, they all changed all the files. They changed all the files to make sure the hooks passed next time, and then when I run again, um, they, they've all passed this time or skipped, for example, if I've got no tests and I've got no JSON in this um, thing. I want to show you a really cool hook that is probably one of my favorite, which is called black, which is a code formatter. So you can get this um, from this repo here. Uh, let's just fix that, called black, which formats all your code here for you. But the thing with black is that it defaults to 80. Um, so basically it will go through all your entire code base and try and format your code to the black code standard. But the black code standard says that, you know, line lengths should be 80 characters long. And I kind of prefer 120 characters just because I find that it um, take up more screen space. So uh, you can just pass args also to these hooks. Uh, so for example, for this one for black, I want to pass the args line length is 120. Um, and you can see here, I'm gonna have to again uh, stage my commits and then uh, do pre-commit run. And this will go through now and run uh, black. So you can see black here was ran and it failed because some of these, um, all these files here were reformatted. So you can see it reformatted eight files and left five unchanged. And you can see if I run that again, git add. And then if I run that again, <coughs> You can see this time black passed. So now we set um, pre-commit up to work on a repository. Let's see how it uh, works when we actually go to, make, to commit code. Okay, so I'm in a, a different repository this time which has uh, some more uh, hooks installed, but I'm just gonna show you the kind of workflow here. So you, you can see if I go git status, uh, I've got no changes in this repository, uh, but I just want to make a small change to this readme file. Um, and you can see if I go git status now, um, I, you know, I've modified, so let's, uh, Add that to be staged so it's ready to be staged and now if I go git commit um, you know fixing typo um, what's going to happen is when I run this it's going to run all my commit hooks to make sure that I can actually commit this so if I press enter now um, you can see it goes through and runs all my hooks and if all my hooks pass then it will do the commit otherwise it um, obviously won't Perfect, so there we go. There's a uh, working example of how you can use pre-commit hooks to make sure everybody committing code to your code base is in uh, the same kind of style format. And uh, there's very, there's, there's thousands of hooks out there that you can pick from and you can customize and change them to your liking. What I'm gonna do is I'll leave a link in the description of a repo that um, has commit hooks in. So if you wanna try it out, you can um, obviously clone the repo and use that um, as an example. If you found this useful, please uh, give it a thumbs up. Please like, subscribe, all the good stuff. It really helps me out. Please comment down below with uh, any questions you might have. Thank you very much for watching everybody and have a great day.